but uh, we're glad that you're here. Um, one of we're we're talking about a an interesting company today, Zoom. Uh, you know, Zoom has become a household name these days. Ever since the pandemic started about a year ago, um, it's it's become a verb. You know, how many of you have zoomed lately? Uh, um, I bet you just about everybody has been on a call or a or hosted a call on Zoom uh, at some point in time, whether it was with family, whether it was professionally. Whatever the case may be, I, I bet you we've just about all of us have zoomed. I've zoomed a few times this week already myself. Um, it's uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, earnings calls today and how to listen to an earnings call. Um, we're uh, it's interesting if you think about it when you when you think about listening to an earnings call. A lot of people just really don't have a great sense of wanting to listen to that earnings call. Uh, a lot of times it's difficult. There's a lot of numbers that are going around. There's a lot of acronyms. There's uh, a quarter over quarter. There's year to date numbers that are being talked about and it can get a little bit confusing. And so a lot of times we listen to it as uh, what's in it for us, right? What's the good that's in it for me? What's the bad that's in it for me? We want to give you a framework to listen to just about any earnings call that you might be interested in, whether it's your own company, whether it's one of your customers, uh, whether it's uh, a vendor of yours or whether it's just a company that maybe you're interested in. I don't know, maybe you want to invest in their stock or something like that. So uh, we've got an opportunity to do that. We're going to we're going to uh, use the chat box primarily as our communication tool today. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do this. Get your fingers limbered up because we're going to use it quite a bit. If you would tell me in the chat box where you're calling in from or where you're joining this uh, webinar from. Uh, whether it's a city, a state, a country, uh, maybe it's your den or your office at home or uh, wherever the case may be. Thanks, Brooklyn. We've got some from Utah, Edwards, California, Tampa, Florida. My daughter is actually here from Tampa, Florida right now as well with her two babies. So you got granddaughters in the house. Uh, Boise, Idaho. Awesome. Uh, Acumen. I found it secondhand. Uh, Michigan, Toronto, Chicago, Scottsdale, Oklahoma, Chi-Town. Uh, good. We got people from all over the place. Rhode Island as well. We've got, uh, so we've got Canadians so far. Any other, uh, uh, people from outside the U S. All right, we got a good sampling of people going so far. We're adding a lot of people right now. I can see the numbers going up as, uh, as everybody's uh, filing in. I want to ask you a couple of polling questions as well. Uh, we'll do this in addition to uh, the chat box, but this is this first question. Is this the first time that you have attended 1 of these webinars? If you would answer in the chat box, be sure and hit submit so that your vote is actually counted. Yes, this is the first time. No, I attended the last 1 or no, I attended a, another session. Uh, tell me what your what you think there looks like we're getting some pretty good responses. Everybody's taking a vote there. All right, let's see here. Give you just a couple more seconds to, to answer that question. Uh, we've had a good time doing these calls. We've had some interesting companies that we have highlighted and featured during these. Uh, learn a lot about these. Uh, and so it's, uh, uh, it's been very entertaining as well as uh, I learn a lot from it as well. Very educational also. All right, let's see here. While our, our polling results are tabulating, uh, just a little bit more about Acumen Learning. We're actually headquartered in Utah, as Ginger said, and I am in the Atlanta area. I thought I wanted to be an accountant when I was growing up. I don't know why, uh, but intermediate accounting pretty much talked me out of that. But I tell you that basically because a lot of those companies that Ginger was talking about, I ended up looking at financial statements all the time. So you don't have to be an accountant to uh, think about listening to an earnings call. You don't have to be a CPA. Anybody can do it especially if you have the right tools and the right framework uh, to follow. All right, let's see here. Let's do this. Uh, all right, looks like, uh, let's see here. We've got about, uh, gosh, the uh, percentages aren't coming. Here we go, poll results right here. All right, there we go. Now maybe everybody else can see it as well. Uh, we've got a lot of people who have said this is the first time I've attended. Thank you very much for that. Um, and then we've got uh, some that have never attended uh, or excuse me, attended the last session. And then there's some other people who said they attended last year. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. 
uh, I think you'll enjoy and appreciate the tools that we're actually providing today. Um, interesting statistics as you think about earnings calls and you think about different companies. This is a Harvard Business Review study. 95% of employees don't understand their company strategy. That's a real challenge if you think about it. Most strategies are financial in nature and I can't tell you how many CEOs I've, I've heard from that say, gosh, I wish more people would listen to the earnings calls and understand what's going on. Well, if we can't understand the strategy, it makes it kind of challenging to listen to those earnings calls, but that's the best place to get the strategy. There's another interesting statistic that says that 90% of employees don't understand their uh, company's important business metrics. You know, there's really only a handful of important business metrics that companies rely on. Think about there may be a lot more that they actually look at as well, but but the framework we're going to give you today really focuses on five business drivers. We believe all successful companies focus on and that's cash profit assets growth and people. So, uh, when you narrow it down to that, and if you look through, look at the financial statements through the lens of those 5 drivers, it really makes a difference because maybe 2 or 3 or 4 metrics in each 1 of those drivers. We're going to see how zoom relates to those 5 drivers. You may start thinking about it for your company. How do, how do we think about those 5 drivers or maybe in your own role? Uh, and how can we get something more out of the earnings call? Um, imagine you are the CEO. Uh, of Zoom. Now, you can tell by looking at this picture that uh, Zoom must be a technology company because uh, Eric Yuan, the CEO, he's wearing a T-shirt there. You know, IT companies always get to wear the most comfortable clothes. Of course, how many of you, since you've been uh, in the pandemic and, and attending calls on Zoom or some of the other platforms that are out there, how many of you maybe are wearing shorts where nobody can see, but maybe wearing a dress shirt, maybe even a tie. I don't know, but uh, you can tell Eric Yuan is is definitely uh, with a technology company. Uh, just a couple of things about Eric and uh, Zoom. St started off personally emailing canceled subscribers. You know, you know you're a young company when the CEO has an opportunity to email out canceled subscribers. One actually said that he felt like it was just a a uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, you know, same email to everybody, but, uh, Eric actually responded back to him and said, you know what, if you hadn't canceled your zoom, uh, subscription, I would have contacted you via zoom. So I had to email you. Otherwise, uh, it became the most popular video conferencing app, even before the pandemic. You know, it seems like it really took off and we'll look at some numbers here in just a little bit. It really took off during the pandemic and we all got to know Zoom a little bit better. 300 million daily meeting participants. That's quite a few participants to think about and their biggest rivals in the same industry. They're certainly circling right now and uh, Eric is loving that. Um, now, as we think about it from an earnings perspective, there's several people that Eric Yuan probably wants to, to get the communication out to. Um, you know, what do your employees need to know? Um, if they're not listening to the earnings call, how could we make it where maybe they could listen to the earnings call? Or uh, once they know how to listen to it, maybe they'll be able to listen to the call better. So what do you need your employees to know as a CEO? What do you need your customers to know as a CEO? There's a lot of customers out there. There was, you know, there were some security issues early on. We had some customers who didn't necessarily want to use Zoom because there were, what was it, Zoom bombings going on. I think they fixed a lot of those security issues and they're certainly mindful of it. We'll talk about that today a little bit more as well. But what do you need your customers to know? What do you need your shareholders to know? Uh, you know, maybe we need our shareholders to understand what's going on at Zoom so that they know whether to buy more stock or heaven forbid that they will actually want to sell their stock. I'm not sure there's a whole lot of sellers out there right now, though. Um, and then uh, what do you need uh, your partners to know? A lot of channel partners that they're talking to right now and really planning on expanding that partnership relationship. And uh, what do they need to know? Because uh, that might attract more channel partners uh, to come in and help them sell their services as well. So a lot of things, a lot of people that need to know about Zoom and the message that they can get out. Strategy and where we're headed in the future, where we've been in the past. So here's a guarantee that I'll make for you today. Some of you have joined us before, you've heard this guarantee as well. We don't make a whole lot of promises or a whole lot of guarantees. I make one promise in my class and I'll always come through with that. Here's my guarantee for today. Build your, uh, if you will do this quarterly earnings call workbook, 
two or three times, you're going to get it. You may have it already, but you're going to understand it a lot better. You're going to understand some of the terms better. You're going to understand some of the metrics better. This will help you build your credibility uh, within your own organization and with others as well. Build your credibility and it's going to help build your career and it's going to help build your company uh, as well. So let's uh, let's jump into it now and let's get started on uh, what we're going to do. So there's really a three step process that we'll introduce to you today. Uh, number one is prepare for the call. Uh, now, maybe you're preparing for it before the call actually happens. Uh, so you certainly want to find out the information in terms of the timing of when the earnings call is going to be, or maybe it's afterwards. We'll show you how to prepare for uh the earnings call afterwards uh, analyze the data and see what's going on there and then apply it in your everyday life in your particular role how can that help you uh, as you listen to these earnings calls so we're getting into the workbook now exercise one is prepare for the earnings call or getting ready for the call let me just give you a little bit of background on earnings calls maybe we'll call this part earnings calls 101 there's two parts to this number one is the prepared remarks Typically, that's done with the CEO and the CFO. Some others may jump into that part of it as well, but uh, typically prepared remarks. In other words, they know exactly uh, what they're going to say during that particular earnings call. As a matter of fact, some of them are even uh, recording the earnings call and playing it back and having uh, analysts send their questions to them. Uh, Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you answering that. Yeah, we'll get the uh, workbook at the end of the call today. That way you can focus on this right now and then you'll know how to use it once you actually get that. So prepared remarks is one thing. And then the second thing is the question and answer period. So the question and answer period is when the analysts get an opportunity. Sometimes there's actually media personnel on that call as well, and they may get an opportunity to ask questions. But uh, uh, usually that's about the second half of the call, maybe a little bit longer. Typically, I've seen anywhere from six to maybe 20 uh, analysts on the call who get to ask questions. They want to get their questions answered so they understand the company better. Do they want to recommend it? Do they want to downgrade it, upgrade it, whatever the case may be? So they may have some questions and concerns that they want to get answered as well. So those are the two primary parts. As we think about that and, and finding out the call or the transcript, there's a couple of things that we can do. That's step number one uh, in preparing. Locate the call or locate the transcript. Now, some of you probably have heard of this new technology called Google, right? It's, uh, it's pretty cool technology. Uh, so we just put in here a, a search for Zoom IR. IR stands for investor relations. So uh, several different things popped up here, investor relations for Zoom. That seems like a pretty broad category to me, so I want to narrow it down just a little bit more. I'm going to keep looking. Uh, there's press releases from Zoom, which certainly it wouldn't be a bad thing to find the press release for the, each quarter uh, to do our, our uh, research on. Events at Zoom. Oh, that's a good place to go to if I want to find out if I've missed the earnings call or if there's one coming up in the next week or so. But I want to take a look at the Zoom fourth quarter fiscal year 2021 earnings webinar. That looks like the place I'm looking for and the information that I might be able to find. So if I click on that, it's going to take me to this slide right here. And this is the Zoom investor relations, maybe a little bit deeper than the surface of the Zoom investor relations part of it. But uh, it gets us to exactly where we want. Now, you can see up here at the top news and events. That's basically where we ended up going to SEC filings. We have to file a quarterly report with the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. That's called a 10Q. That's for quarters one, two, and three. And then at the end of the year, we file a 10K. So that's our required annual report to file with the SEC. Other information in there as well, stock information. But down here, the Zoom video webinar. So I can watch the Zoom video webinar just by clicking on that link right there. Or down here, you can see supporting materials, uh, the earnings presentation, or the earnings webinar prepared remarks. So, all right, we talked about prepared remarks. So maybe we could click on that and get those. I'm gonna, I'm a step ahead of you though. I clicked on that already and it is only the prepared remarks. I want a transcript that actually has the prepared remarks as well as the analyst questions. So I'm gonna do a little bit more searching now. So I'm gonna go to Zoom earnings call transcript. Now you can see here on, on fool.com, that's Monthly Fool if you've ever heard of them. Uh, interesting organization, a lot, has a lot of stock picks and, and uh, they do a lot of research about companies and their value and 
management teams and, and their uh, forward progress. So Motley Fool has one. Zoom Video Communications has Q3 2021 earnings calls. This final one down here, though, Zoom Video Communications earnings transcripts. This is on Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is a great website to find information on as well. I usually go to either the company website or to Seeking Alpha for that information. This is almost as good as going to an investor relations website. Um, so you can get the transcript. This includes the uh, prepared remarks as well as the analyst questions. You can play the call so you can listen to it if you want. A lot of companies, including Zoom, are, guess what? They're going virtual. So you can see uh, the executives in the presentation as well. You can get the slide deck from the presentation. You can get the press release. You can get the 10K. It's pretty much everything you need right there. So you can go to the website or to uh, Seeking Alpha and find what you're looking for. So we found the, uh, the call or the transcript. Number two in the step is review your notes from past calls. Oh, well, that's great, Kelvin. I don't have any past notes because I haven't listened to past calls. Well, that's what we're going to help you with today. We're going to, by the time we get done here, you're going to see how to prepare your notes. And then that way for the next call, you would have some notes to uh, look back on and see what happened in the last call. Uh, and then finally, we want you to meet with your team. Now, this could be uh, employees that report to you. This could be your sales team. Maybe you're focused on a specific customer as a sales team. Uh, but meet with your team. It's always interesting to get other people's opinions and outlook and, and what they're hearing or understanding was of what they heard or read about in the transcript. So meet with your team, have a discussion about it. That way you'll be able to learn from each other as well. All right, so we've prepared now. All right, now we're ready to analyze. So let's jump into analyze. Before we do that, I wanna introduce this framework to you. This is the five business drivers we believe all successful companies focus on. Cash, profit, assets, growth, and people. Why do we pick these five drivers? Well, three of these are tied directly to the financial statements. Cash is to the statement of cash flows. Profit is on the income statement and assets is on the balance sheet. I haven't met a shareholder or a CEO yet who wasn't interested in growth. I don't know about you all, but uh, I think it's uh, uh, interesting. And then finally, it takes people to make it all happen. So you can see here, if you have an impact on one of these drivers, you're gonna have an impact on other drivers as well. Now we had a lot of graduates of uh, Acumen Learning uh, on the call with us. So I may need your help as we review these uh, five drivers real quick. So uh, be ready to jump in here and help me out just a little bit. So let's start with cash. Those of you who have been in the class before, fill in the blank for me. Cash is what? Some of you may not even been to our class yet. You may be able to fill in that blank as well. Yeah, thanks, Lauren. Cash is king, right? We've got to have cash to be able to survive as an organization. And I think no matter where you are, cash is king. Maybe maybe the UK, maybe London, they, they might refer to it more as the queen, but uh, cash is certainly king here. We look at cash, uh, cash equivalents. We look at uh, cash flows. We're gonna talk a little bit about free cash flow today as well. That's a metric that uh, Zoom is interested in. Uh, interesting because their free cash flow isn't a whole lot less than their cash flow. Uh, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, in terms of, Profit. All right, help me out here again. Anybody who's been to the class before, there's two things that we do to have an impact on profit. We either increase one of those or we reduce the other one. What would those be? Yeah, thanks, Claudia. We lower costs, right? What's the one that we increase? There you go. Thanks, Jill. We increase revenue. So if we can do those two things, then we should be able to have an impact on our profit. Thanks, Mike, for, for really bringing that to a, a, a gift wrapped package there. Increase sales or lower cost. Uh, let's see here. You can go to Motley Fool and Seeking Alpha. Our consultants use those often. There you go. Thanks. I think somebody just answered it. Paul, uh, Ginger, thank you. Yeah, we want to increase operational revenue as well. That's right. And several different profit metrics we might hear. Uh, gross profit or gross margin, operating income, net profit. So we talk about all of those. And then assets. Um, assets are on our balance sheet. Uh, we talk about asset strength and asset utilization. Uh, several other things around there. And then certainly we uh, growth. I tell you what, uh, Zoom certainly saw a year of growth this last year in just about every single category. I think 
as a matter of fact, I mentioned gross profit just a second ago. That may be the one place that they didn't grow was in gross profit or gross margin to be more specific. And then of course, people, it takes people to make it all happen. Who might be those people that help us make it happen? If there are people that help us, yeah, who are those people? Yeah, thanks, Claudia. Customers, Rick says stakeholders, absolutely. Mike says uh, partners, anybody else? Customers say, oh, I forgot employees there. I missed that one as well. Yeah, customers and employees primarily is who we're talking about there, but stakeholders, partners, uh, regulators. A lot of companies are highly regulated. So regu regulators uh, or government affairs is something that we might be interested in as well. So there's a quick review of the five drivers. Here's the workbook. Now we're gonna start off, you see that diagram around the five drivers. That's really the foundation for just about anything that we do, um, we believe in them that much. Now, this executive alignment activity you see over on the left-hand side, this is really what we wanna do is we wanna read the letter to the shareholders, we wanna read the transcript, whatever the case may be, and we wanna get an idea of their priorities around those five drivers. I wanna ask you this real quick. What do you think, Zoom, from what you know of right now, what do you think might be the highest rated drivers for Zoom out of these five, cash, profit, assets, growth, or people? What do you think might be number one for them or number two or three? Uh, profits, people, growth, cash, yeah, y'all all, all hit on those. Probably the top three, interestingly enough, are people, uh, growth, and assets. And we'll see how we came up with those uh, here shortly. But this is a great little exercise right here. As you read the transcript or listen to the call, uh, start thinking about it from the perspective of how many times does the executive mention cash or profit or assets or growth or people. We've got, we've got a definition for all of these five drivers. So if you don't remember it from the review we just did, you can always take a look there. And then we've got trigger words as well that maybe if they mention these trigger words, that's a mention about cash or some of the other drivers as well. So as, a, as an instance, dividends or distributions. Well, you know what, we pay dividends in the form of cash. So that's certainly a great instance for uh, using that cash driver. Stock buybacks, another, we use cash to do that, buying back shares from our shareholders. So you kind of get the idea. So we're gonna take a look at those and see how we did there. And then there's also, four different questions that we want you to consider. And I'm gonna share with you my findings on Zoom, but which drivers seem to get the most attention and why? What were two or three main points the executives were trying to make? What are the goals, trends, and objectives going forward? And what key questions or concerns were raised by the analyst community? Now, after you do this two or three times, when you start, uh, when you start listening to the earnings call, you start kind of taking notes in terms of what some of these questions are. You'll notice, this is my copy of the transcript. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, I underline things, I circle things. I've got the initials for the five drivers out next to the statement that was made. So I can come back and real easily check and see which driver they were talking about, what was the main subject there um, that they were talking about as well. So let's, uh, let's meet Eric. I'm gonna ask for your assistance here just a little bit as we think about this executive alignment. Eric made a few comments in the transcript in the earnings call. Um, I want you to help me figure out which driver these go toward. All right, we'll start with this, just this first sentence right here. My heartfelt appreciation goes out to our approximately 4,400 employees for their incredible energy, perseverance, and dedication. Which driver do you think he's talking about there? Couple of you have said people, thank you. Yeah, I've got a few more responses in there as well. Yeah, absolutely, it's all about people. There are 4,400 employees. It's gonna be interesting, some of the other comments that we find out about uh, people as well. This next question, or, or excuse me, next sentence. We are humbled to see workers, students, and families flock to our platform to connect, contribute, and collaborate. Yeah, what do you think there? Growth, I like it, customers, Okay, and customers apply to our people driver. That's right. Uh, Donald, I like that. People and assets. Yeah, well, I think their platform is certainly their asset. And we're gonna talk about some of their other platforms during the, the call today as well. 
Uh, yeah, so certainly uh, people and assets right there. I think there's a lot of growth in there as well, especially as students and families flock to this platform. Absolutely. Now, the final one, Zoom is here to help leading the transformation with extensive and growing portfolio of offerings and product features. What do you think there? What do you think the uh, platform is an asset? Thanks, Mike. Certainly growth is mentioned there, right? Growing portfolio. That's right. Growth and assets, assets and growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, we've actually, he talks about the three that I mentioned that I found as being the uh, biggest priorities, or at least the most mentioned anyway, uh, in the, uh, in the earnings call. Now, this is Kelly Steckelberg. She's the CFO for Zoom. I'm not going to highlight each sentence here, but just take a look at this one and tell me what what uh, drivers you see in this um, in this uh, conversation here? We had exceptional operating cash flow of 399 million, up from 37 million. Uh, free cash flow was 378 million. Looking into fiscal year 2022, we expect to increase our capital expenditures related to the build out of our data center, uh, our data center infrastructure infrastructure to support our growth outlook and drive efficiencies. What all do you see there? I think I saw some cash growth and assets. Uh, see more cash growth assets, capital expenditures. Yeah, capital expenditures could be assets. And typically, we're going to think about cash as we think about capital expenditures as well. Uh, great job, Jill. Drive efficiencies. Yeah, and when we drive efficiencies, we're focusing on profit there. Uh, yeah, data center is an asset. Thanks, Mike. Cash growth and assets from Nicole. Absolutely. So she got just about all of the drivers mentioned in her statement there. Now let's take a look at an analyst who was on the call as well. What was what was his? Oh, let's see here. You're right. She is wearing a t-shirt also. Yeah, good, good catch on that one. I didn't notice that. Um, this is Matthew Hedberg. He's with RBC Capital Markets. He uh he got an opportunity to ask a question. Uh, see what you think about what he's asking. Momentum with the G2K. Does anybody know what the G2K is? <laughs> yeah, this guy is definitely an analyst. He is not a tech guy, is he? Uh, G2K is Global 2000. So the largest uh, 2000 global customers, publicly traded companies is what they're talking about there. So momentum with the G2K customers, over $100,000 in annual recurring revenue is certainly impressive, but remains vastly underpenetrated re relative with the overall population. I think if I remember correctly, I think they've only got 16 customers in the G2K over $100,000. Uh, so tell me what you think about that. And then can you talk about steps you're taking to drive even faster G2K or further G2K adoption? And then also you have $4.2 billion in cash at the end of the year. Uh, thoughts on deploying that? Obviously there are some capbacks. What drivers are you seeing there? Yeah, growth, absolutely. What steps are you taking to drive even faster or further G2K adoption? Total growth right there. Uh, people growth and assets, I like it, I like it. Uh, growth, cash, and assets, absolutely. Cash because of the $4.2 billion in cash, you got it. Uh, let's see, growth and people, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, because those customers, those G2K customers are people. That's right, thanks Brent. Uh, growth, cash, assets, and people, just about every one of those drivers is mentioned there. So I think you get the idea there. Um, here's my responses as I read through the prepared remarks and the analyst questions. So all together, I like to kind of break them out into two different groups. So how many questions were asked related to the prepared remarks? How many topics were mentioned as we think about the analyst questions and the responses from the executive? So you can see I basically had a clear winner right here about people uh, and then two more, not too far behind that in uh, assets and growth in that order. So, um, so we're going to focus on those. It's interesting as you think about people. Well, here you go. Here's, <laughs> can y'all read that? Okay. I was just wondering. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Francois says, I was wondering if prepared statements deliberately left some obvious things unsaid to get analysts to talk, to ask. Softball questions. I tell you what, uh, Francois, there are some softball questions every once in a while, but there's some there's some hard balls every once. There's some strikes with about a 95 mile per hour fastball going through there as well. 
I, I know you can read those, but I'm going to make it a whole lot easier for you. Here you go. Here's the first question we're talking about. Which business drivers seem to get the most attention and why? Well, people uh, was number one with many, many uh, discussions about people, as you might imagine. I, I love this. Zoom at a glance. We make our customers happy. How much more simple can it get than that? We make our customers happy. Happy customers drive revenue growth. Can't complain about that. Happier happiness was mentioned at least seven times in the transcript. Uh, employees delivering happiness and building trust and drive employee happiness. They want to make the employees happy. They want to make the customers happy. They want to make the shareholders happy. I think they want to make everybody happy. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, assets mentioned just a little bit earlier. Zoom has become a household brand and even a even a verb to some of us. Let's zoom later on today. Uh, growing portfolio of offerings and product features. Now that can fit into the uh, the growth driver as well, but I put it into assets. So a portfolio of offerings and product features. They've got a lot more than just video conferencing. Zoom phone. That was the fastest growing product line quarter over quarter last year. Zoom meetings, Zoom rooms, Zoom United, on Zoom. Uh, their secure platform they talked about as well. Uh, preferred video conferencing app. Uh, Eric mentioned that in uh, his statements, opening statements. Security on our platform. Fiscal 22 will increase CapEx for build out of data center to support growth and drive additional efficiencies as well. So certainly a lot of assets they're talking about there. And then growth, uh, you know, if, uh, if I didn't read anything, I would probably guess that growth was one of their biggest drivers. As I mentioned, I think the only thing they didn't grow was in uh, uh, gross margin. Uh, and that's partly because of the free offerings that they have. Uh, you know, if you're not doing long calls like this or all day uh, classes, uh, you can get it for free for about 40, 45 minutes, something like that, maximum of three people on the line. Uh, but uh, anyway, revenues grew 326% from 622 million, are you ready for this, to $2.7 billion. Wow. That's amazing. Grew non-GAAP operating margin from 14.2% to 37.1%. Free cash flow grew to 1.4 billion from $114 million. Growth all over the place. 1,644 customers generating more than 100,000 in trailing 12 months revenue. Now I said there's only about 16 in the uh, G2K, but all together about 1,600 customers doing that. Up 156% year over year. Added 385,000 customers with more than 10 employees to give them a total of 467,000 uh, employees. Uh, or excuse me, customers, I should say. Uh, now, what were the two or three main points the executives were trying to make? Uh, first of all, uh, it, it was very obvious as you read that they love making people happy. They're in the business of making happy. Uh, whether it's employees, customers, channel partners, investors, doesn't matter. They want people to be happy. It's a simple program. Uh, it's a simple platform. So that certainly makes a lot of people happy. Uh, number two, people think of Zoom as a video conferencing company, but they've got many other assets, products that can be added on to it as well. And then finally, Zoom has become a household name. Large part of their future strategy is selling additional products to existing uh, uh, to existing customers, additional products to existing customers. They've got more products, more customers. They actually gave some three instances of customers who actually had added additional products or features onto what they already had. Uh, and based on their brand, companies are willing to talk to them now, um, uh, either from the bottom up or the top down. Doesn't really matter. You know, at one time when they were younger and smaller, they were getting, uh, they could talk to the people at the bottom of the totem pole, but now they're talking to people at the top of that totem pole as well. So those are the two or three main points the executive was trying to make. What are the goals, trends, and objectives going forward? So continued happiness and growth, it looks like. Target larger customers who spend more money. Continue targeting existing customers who can take on additional products. Uh, continue supporting approximately 125,000 free K through 12 domains. Uh, prioritize R and D hiring. Boy, what? How smart is that? Uh, uh, give it to them free in kindergarten and uh, through 12th grade. Get them loving the product, and then all of a sudden they become adults and they're using the product at whatever company they may be going to. 
Uh, prioritize R&D hiring. So that's that's kind of interesting. They've got a pretty good R&D spend already, but they realize they've got some opportunities there as well. Drive further innovation, expansion, and security on the Zoom platform. And then finally, fiscal year 22 revenue, they're predicting that they're going to be up about 42 to 43 percent and that non-GAAP operating income will be up about 14 to 16 percent. Okay. Now, what key questions or concerns were raised by the analyst community? There were there were a lot of questions. There were some repeat questions. Um, uh, the uh, there were, gosh, I think about 16 analysts that were on the call. So some of the questions that they had growth opportunities for fiscal 2022. Is that coming from Zoom, Zoom phone, new customers, whatever the case may be? And a, and a large part of that they seem to think was going to be Zoom phone. They also mentioned that growth could slow down as the pandemic uh, certainly uh, decreases or comes to an end. So certainly taking that into consideration in their planning for fiscal year 22. By the way, their fiscal year ends at the end of January. So they're already talking about fiscal year 2022. Rolling out channel partners and they're rolling getting larger customers. Uh, ARR is annual recurring revenue. So they, they measure that with uh, their customers as well. G2K customers over 100,000 and ARR is vastly underpenetrated. So how to drive this faster. Uh, deploying their cash at the end of the year. They had $4.2 billion in cash. What are you going to do with it? I guess they could pay down debt if they had any debt, but they don't. So I guess they're going to have to find some other things to do. Matter of fact, most of their investments last year was in marketable securities because they didn't have any debt to pay down on. Uh, roll out of Zoom phone to additional countries as well, not just customers, but also additional countries. Traction with on Zoom. I don't know if you all know what on Zoom is, but basically people can uh, teach a yoga class or uh, uh, jazz or uh, whatever the case may be and earn money off of their uh, ability to uh, uh, perform on Zoom. Uh, profile of the eight, it's 18, I think I said 16 earlier, the 18 Zoom phone customers with more than 10,000 seats and how to grow that segment. The interesting answer to that one was it was pretty varied. Uh, all industries uh, kind of fit into that particular category. So good news for Zoom, I guess they can sell to all, all uh, industries. Uh, sales team growth along with channel partners. Hey, you know, big company now, you need more, you need more uh, uh, salespeople, you need more channel partners. Uh, uh, seasonality of the business. Is there a seasonality to the business? And then Microsoft as a competitor as well. So I saw some WebEx mentions up there. They mentioned something about Microsoft uh, also. All right, so that's our, our four key questions there. We've looked at the five drivers, the executive alignment. Uh, now let me introduce you to another tool that is included uh, in this workbook. This is called Navigating the Financials. So this makes it very simple to look at financial statements um, and see how well a particular company is doing. So we mentioned the five drivers. That's a big part of what we do. You can see over here on the left-hand side, four out of the five drivers, cash, profit, assets, and growth. And then people, of course, it takes people to make it all happen. As we go across the top here, the first one is key metrics and equations. Uh, so what are the metrics? And then what do we need to look for if we're looking at a financial statement? Okay, so in this particular situation, the first one is cash and cash equivalents. And that's the line item that we're going to be looking for as well. Now, the next column is what statement can we find this on? Is it on the income statement, the balance sheet, or the statement of cash flows? So in the chat box, where can we find cash and cash equivalents? What do you think? Income statement, balance sheet, or statement of cash flows? Yeah, I made it pretty easy for you, didn't I? We've got a dot in there, plus I parked my, <laughs> my highlighter right there next to it. Uh, yeah, so we're going to take a look at the balance sheet real quick and figure out how much cash we had at the end of the year. So here we go, current assets, assets, and here's cash and cash equivalents. How much cash did we have at the end of the year? Sorry about that. Yeah, 2.24 billion, that is correct. 2.24 billion. So we'll go now and we'll add that into, sorry, 
There we go. We'll add that into our navigating the financials worksheet right here on cash and cash equivalents. You can see we're going to compare it to last year as well. First of all, let's take a look at cash from operations. Uh, where can we find cash from operations in our financial statements? Income statement, balance sheet, or statement of cash flows? Thanks, Mike. Yeah, statement of cash flows. Thanks, Caroline. I just worked with Caroline last week. Good to see you, Caroline. Um, yeah, statement of cash flows. So we're going to take a look at statement of cash flows. We've got three different sections here on the cash flow statement, the cash flows from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, and cash flows from financing activities. How much was the cash flow for Zoom in 2021? It's going to be in this section right here, cash flows from operating activities. 2021 we're looking for, what do you think? Exactly, exactly. $1.47 billion. That's this number right here. $1,471,177,000. Uh, so $1.4 billion is the correct answer. So we're going to plug that in here. Now let's go back to our income statement real quick and look for our total revenue. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here's our income statement. Uh, where do we find our, how much revenue did we do in 2021? A lot of times we'll call that the top line on our income statement, right? Some of you who have been with us in the past know that we call that top line. Absolutely. Thank you all. $2.6 billion in revenue last year. All right. So we're going to plug that one in. Then we're going to come down to net income. Where can we find net income? Which statement? Yeah, p &L. exactly. We're going to go back to the same statement we just found revenue on. How much is our net income? How much is our net income? Exactly, $672 million. Uh, $672 million. Now, good news. The next one is for net profit margin, and the line items we're looking for is net income and total revenue. Guess what? We just found those right here so we're going to add those to our uh, ntf here 672 million divided by 2.6 billion that gives us uh, a net profit margin of 25.3 percent uh would you think that that would be in the high profit margin category or the low margin category Yeah, I can see there's some races going on there to see who can be first. I, I, I don't know if y'all are sitting there together and typing together or not, but I love it. Yeah, uh, we've got some high margin uh, uh, categories here. We've got one that says mid margin categories. There are some that are higher than that, but I would say that they're uh, probably high, especially if you think about 10% being the, uh, the average S&P 500 profit margin. So 25.3. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and fill out the rest of it, point out a couple of metrics. Basically, uh, return on assets, 12.7%. The S&P 500 on that is about 7%. So th they're killing it there. Now, part of that is because their uh, net income uh, and their total assets, they've got a lot of assets. Uh, net income was pretty high, relatively speaking, especially at 25.3%. So 12.7%. You can see the, these are just staggering numbers down here when we compare 2021 fiscal year to 2020, 325% growth in revenue, 2,954% in total uh, net income growth. Let's see here, went from a low profit margin company to a high profit margin company in a year. Yeah, Mike looked over here, he, he already looked at the comparison year, 3.5% to 25.3%. Uh, huge increase, and you can see here as well, 283 million in cash up to 2.24 uh, billion in cash. So good results here. Uh, revenue growth was still 88.2% the year before from 20, 2020 to 2019. Let's see, talk about a company being at the right place at the right time with the right product. You got it, Brent. Yeah, they definitely were in the right place at the right time. Now. I saw some WebEx mentions here, so it's only fair that we should take a look at Cisco, who uh, created WebEx, right, and see how they're doing. Well, look at this. They've got 
a, a fair amount of cash here compared to what Zoom is, $11.8 billion. Cash flow is doing phenomenal as well, $15.4 billion. Total revenue, $49 billion compared to $2.6 billion. So Cisco is definitely a large, large company there. Now, it'd be interesting to see exactly how much revenue WebEx is generating uh, to, to have a little bit more of a comparison there, because there's a lot of other products in Cisco as well. Uh, I want to say it's about $5 billion in revenue from the category that they fit into within the Cisco uh, 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 time frame or, or uh, uh, platform. So uh, about $5 billion, and that includes some other products as well. But still, a phenomenal company at Cisco, 22.7% in terms of net margin. Uh, and they've been around uh, uh, for a long time. So uh, good numbers at Cisco as well. With uh, I say that, now if we get down to the growth part of it, they actually have shrunk just a little bit the last uh, year uh, in revenue, net income, and in earnings per share growth. But, uh, but uh, uh, certainly uh, doing well. Let's see here. With all these great results, why is the Zoom stock down 3%? Now, thanks, Brooklyn, for answering the question. Probably because people are anticipating them not using it as much. Yeah, they mentioned that in the call, as a matter of fact. With the pandemic, I don't know if you want to say coming to an end or not, but certainly slowing down. Uh, we're hearing about people going back to the office now to some degree. How much will Zoom need to be used uh, in that time frame? I, who knows? Maybe we look at Zoom again in a year and see uh, see how they're doing another year later uh, into the into the uh, pandemic. See how it's doing there as well. We looked at UPS last uh, last quarter as uh, our highlight company in the transportation industry. So this we're just comparing now, not necessarily uh, any comparisons to these companies, other than that they've both been highlighted by Acumen Learning uh, in our calls here today. Uh, so quite a bit of cash, quite a bit of cash flow. UPS has been around for uh, 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 quite a while. Total revenue of $84.6 billion. Net income, they've had some good growth the last uh, last year as well, uh, certainly in revenue, net income, and in earnings per share. So interesting to see some of those numbers. 1.6% uh, profit margin, so probably a low margin category there. Let's see here. Francois says, I feel like bad results means I'm sure they'll do better while good results translates to it's not sustainable. I, that's an interesting point, Francois. I like that. I like that. Um, all right. So that's the that's the tool, uh, at least in terms of we've done our preparation. We've done our analyze. Uh, now you know how to use both of those tools. Now we need to apply this information that we've learned about Zoom. All right. Uh, you may have had a mom who told you this. If not, maybe your boss told you this. I don't know. To know and not to do is not to know. We always say in our classes, you know, we hope you walk out of here and, and say, oh, my gosh, that was a great class. But more importantly than that, we hope you walk out and say, oh, my gosh, I've got some great tools that I can use in my job every single day. Because that's certainly more important. That's what's going to help you apply this information. So now let's move on to the apply stage. Uh, so there's a couple of different sections for apply. Number one is what new insights did you gain as a result of your analysis? And then based on what you've learned, what are the three actions that you'll take? Let me share with you what uh, my insights were and the three actions that I'll take. Several different things. It's interesting. COVID-19 caused some real challenges for many industries, but for some it was a catalyst for growth. And certainly Zoom saw that catalyst for growth. Uh, uh, really early on in the pandemic stage and really had uh, become the uh, most popular platform even before the pandemic. So uh, uh, as Brent said a little bit ago, thanks for that comment, Brent. Uh, right place, right time uh, with the right product. So Zoom certainly benefited greatly from the pandemic. Uh, Zoom is much more than a video conferencing company. They've got a lot of different products. A lot of different add on or bolt on products that uh, can go along with the, the base product and certainly uh, uh, focusing on that to a large degree with a lot of their existing customers. Zoom is very user friendly, but I never realized how happy they try to make people. Uh, you know, hey, it's a simple product. I'm pretty happy using it, but uh, I, I, I never realized they thought about making people happy. Their gross profit 
could be higher if it weren't for the free product that they give away. I mentioned the, you know, the limited product, uh, you're limited on the time that you can talk, you're limited on the number of people that can have the, the K through 12 uh, product. Uh, so they went from about an 80% gross margin uh, in 2000, uh, to, uh, let's see, 2020, I guess it was, to a 70% gross margin in 2020, 2021. So, and then they're focused on R&D as well as having a secure platform. Uh, Zoom bombing was a challenge. There were a lot of uh, people who, uh, because of their IT department said, nope, we're not gonna use Zoom. But it seems as though they may have fixed all of those problems or at least most of those problems, but they're still making sure they wanna uh, focus on that. So those are my insights. And then based on what I learned, what are three actions that I'll take? Well, I wanna learn more about Zoom's additional products to see if they would benefit Acumen Learning. Uh, you know, bef before I thought it was just, hey, let me get on the Zoom video and, and do my classes and uh, use a couple of features that are in there, the breakout rooms, the chat box and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, there may be some other products that might benefit us there. I, I think it'd be a great idea to network with other facilitators, to get other ideas on how to use Zoom. Certainly, we've got a number of facilitators at our office. We're all using uh, Zoom or using many platforms as well. And so, you know, there may be some other ideas that we can get to make it a, a better uh, use in any of those platforms uh, and not necessarily just Zoom. And then, you know what? You're not a good salesperson if you're not trying to sell, right? Uh, make a sales call to see if Zoom needs business acumen training. Hey, we're all facilitators. We're all, uh, we're all in the sales department. We believe if you're not in sales, you're certainly supporting sales. And so we believe everybody should have an opportunity to do that. So wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be cool to have the Zoom uh, uh, a business acumen training? Uh, let's see here. Do you have any cheat sheets or similar pages for average metrics by industry, tech sector average, EBITDA margin uh, percent versus transportation uh, average EBITDA margin? Uh, S&P 500 is typically where we're getting our margins from. I'm, I'm going to Try to wrap this up here in just a few minutes, get you all the tool. Uh, uh, if somebody could uh, answer that one, I would be uh, really appreciate that. Uh, a contrarian pessimist. I'm, <laughs> oh, there we go with who doesn't want to be happy. Love it. Love it. All right. So uh, that's the, the actions that I'm going to take as a result of my research here. Now, uh, schedule a review. Um, you know, now that you've done this, it's we've talked about meeting with your teams, whether that be employees or whether it be your sales teams. Uh, but uh, we certainly want to meet with our teams and uh, the, the, the review may be different all depending on who you might select to take a look at and analyze. As a matter of fact, um, we're going to do, we've already figured out who we're going to use uh, for this call next month. Uh, I'm going to mention it. I hope I'm right. Uh, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I uh, believe it's GM. And uh, thank you. Yep. So GM. So now I want to give you a little bit of a uh, challenge. You're going to get the tool here in just a second, the quarterly earnings call workbook. So if uh, you want to analyze your own company, that's awesome. If you do, I'd love for you to meet with your manager, kind of align uh, with his strategy, your strategy. What are the things that you've found uh, and what can you do? to have an impact on the drivers and the challenges within your own company. If you analyze a customer or a partner, maybe you go meet with your sales manager and determine some of the strategies about approaching that particular customer. Um, uh, and you can align with your sales manager as well. Uh, what are the trends that they're experiencing? How can, how can you help that customer when you're focused around the five drivers? In other words, uh, go in and talk to them in their language, but around those five drivers, which ones are they focusing on? Which ones might be lower strategies or lower priorities? Uh, how can your product or service help them with their cash or their profit or their assets or their growth or their people? So uh, meet with your sales manager and talk about strategies along that. If you analyze the competitor or benchmark company, again, meet with your own manager and talk about the things that you found with uh, a competitor or a peer group company, if you wanna think about it from that perspective. And what are some of the actions that you and your team can take to be more competitive and more innovative? Okay, so schedule that review. Matter of fact, in the chat box, who do you think you might review uh, once you get this tool? Is it, a, is it your own company? Is it a customer or partner? Or is it a benchmark company or a competitor?
Thanks, Wayne. Competitor, okay. Texas Instruments looks like our own company. Awesome. Uh, uh, GM, thanks, Mike. Uh, own company, potential employer. Oh boy, that's a great idea, Krista. I can't imagine going into an interview and being better prepared than telling your uh, interviewer what everything you know about their particular company. I love it, love it. Potential employer, own company, Texas Instruments, excellent. Uh, my company, my own company, customers. All right, good, good. We've got a lot of people doing that. Um, so I recommend that you do that. I would do it pretty soon too. However, take a look and see when those earnings calls are going to be coming out. Maybe you can do it here in the next week or two. Matter of fact, two of my customers had their earnings calls at nine o'clock this morning. So, uh, it is rolling around for that time frame. Now. We've done prepare, we've done analyze, apply. We know how to do this now, right? So now we can go out and really apply it to just about any anybody. Again, a reminder of the three steps. By the way, what step am I missing here? Number two. Well, number one is locate the call or transcript. Uh, number two is number two is anybody remember? Preparing list. There you go. Pull out your notes from the last call, right? Review your notes from past calls. Guess what? Now you're going to have notes from the past call as soon as you get through analyzing these particular companies. And then finally, meet with your team. Here's your challenge. Who are you going to analyze? You all have answered a lot of those already. Uh, workforce L2, compete against, partner with, invest in, or interested in. Many of you uh, have attended our class before. Uh, so if you would, do me a favor. Uh, we work with 30 of the Fortune 50 companies as well as a lot of other companies. Here are some of the benefits that they see coming out of our classes. Improved the performance of your business or function, increased collaboration. I'm not going to read all of these to you, but if you've been through our class before, or maybe if it's even been to one of these webinars for what the CEO needs you to know, uh, which benefit did you see coming through at your particular uh, company? Uh, a, B, C, D, E, or F. What do you think? We do a lot of different classes. Uh, we do. We used to do in-person classes. I think we've done two since the pandemic started. I've got one scheduled at the end of August, but otherwise we have been a virtual company uh, pretty much since then. Uh, we do anywhere from one-day courses to four-day courses. We do, uh, we do sales training. We'd work with different groups within organizations. Um, we, uh, we do it all virtually. I'm in the middle of a three-day virtual class uh, right now, uh, in the Asia Pacific region, they were, they were nice enough to give me the week, uh, the rest of the week off in terms of teaching their class. I come back and do day 3 next week. So 4 to 6 hour classes is about the average in terms of, uh, uh, the time frames for virtual classes. And we certainly would work, do that with, uh, with the company. So we've got a lot of different answers here. B increased collaboration, C improved upward communications, D improved employee engagement. Uh, e and F, uh, increased business focus and improved teamwork. Awesome. Awesome. So here you go. Here's where you get the tool. AcumenLearning.com slash webinar. The tool is totally free. Okay. I don't want you to be scared off by this hundred dollars off. That is not talking about the workbook. The workbook is valuable, but we're giving that to you free. Uh, thank you, Ginger. I appreciate that. To get the workbook, suggest a company. We break down next and get a coupon to our online course. There's the, the link to the website as opposed to having to type it in. Uh, if you do visit that website and are interested in learning more, that $100 off goes to our online learning platform, our online business acumen class. It takes, I don't know, probably five to eight hours, all depending on how quick you are to go through the entire thing. We're giving you $100 off if you sign up for that. You get a copy of the workbook. Again, I want to challenge everybody. Uh, take a look at GM's earnings call and uh, come back with your workbook prepared and compare notes. I think uh, I think Brent Barclay is going to be doing the next one. So you'll compare notes with Brent. That's going to be on May 20th. Uh, same location as here. You'll get an invitation just like you did the last time. And we're looking forward to having that. Uh, Y'all have been a great group. I appreciate all the uh, interaction there and, and uh, the responses to the questions and your help in teaching this class today. Uh, so come back next time. We'll, uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, different companies. Me and my team, we're going to stick around for a few minutes. If any of you have any questions that you want to ask, uh, we're going to be here as long as you want to ask those questions. So uh, feel free. Thank you all for the comments. I appreciate that. It's a lot of fun taking a look at these.
we did cover a lot quickly, Wayne. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's good stuff very fast. So that's why it helps to practice a little bit with those workbooks and see what you find out. You get better and better and better each time you do it. You start taking notes kind of the way that workbook is is uh, progressing there. Thank you. Appreciate it, Krista. Kelvin, we've got a question from Francois that might be helpful to answer the larger group. It's uh, do do we have recommendations on doing similar exercises? With privately held companies, uh, are, as well, you could think of it as uh, non for profit companies as well. Um, I, I might just share some insights and then anything you want to add, uh, Kelvin. Sure. Uh, obviously, uh, you won't necessarily be able to access their financial performance, uh, depending on what type of organization. But uh, uh, one of the things we do is we'll look at uh, uh, companies that are in their industry that are publicly traded, where you can kind of see the key types of metrics they're focused on, et cetera. Uh, obviously, you can go to their website where often they'll have press release and communication as you think about the first part of what Kelvin shared, the executive alignment, uh, reading their press releases, reading any communication on their website, the about our company is a great place to access that, and then try and search uh, those within the industry that might be publicly held. Those are some things that we've done. Kelvin, anything else you would add? <laughs> that, was, that would be exactly what I was going to say, Brent. So we think a lot alike. Uh, the second thing I would mention to you, too, is these, this five driver model is a simple model. And if, if you don't have any financial statements, uh, whether it's the company you're talking about, the private company, or it, and if there's no particular companies that are publicly traded companies or have financial statements available to see what's going on with theirs, uh, you know, as Brent said, you, you know, it's amazing if you can research companies in the same industry and go in and say, not, you know, it looks like some of your competitors or some of your peers uh, are having challenges in this particular area or are doing really well in another area. That's a great conversation. If you don't have that, the, the uh, five drivers is such a great concept that you can have tremendous conversations just talking about, hey, tell me about your cash. Tell me about your profit. You know, they may or they may not. I had a customer one time, they went, uh, they wanted to use something that they learned in the class and they went out to one of their customers and and she was scared to death to mention this because she was scared to death what the what his answer might be. And she wasn't, know, wasn't sure if she was gonna be able to answer or not, but she's, she just did a simple statement. Tell me about your asset utilization. That led to a, a, a 30 or 45 minute conversation about asset utilization and ended up leading to a sale. So sometimes if we just kind of take that step of boldness and ask a question, whether we know the answer to it or not, it, it may lead to a great opportunity. But many times, if you do the research like this, you're gonna know the numbers better than what your customers know their own numbers. So great stuff there. Uh, follow up question, how can you compare companies that specialize in one tool versus larger companies, Microsoft, Cisco, where this tool would be a part of a portfolio? Um, well, basically, you just pull up the financial statements of either or company. As I mentioned, as we were talking, uh, you know, I kind of looked to to see if I could find how much uh, 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 business Cisco was doing with WebEx. And they fit into a category of products. And uh, uh, so I couldn't get the specific number for WebEx, but uh, got a number for that particular category. And it was it was about $5 billion for that particular category out of about 50. Let's see, Mike's suggesting, or do the industry numbers or a showcase company like Mars is private. You could run this on Hershey who is public and get a pretty good idea what Mars is focused on. Yeah, good, good point, Mike. Great example. Thanks, Francois, we appreciate it. We've got about 66 people on the line still. Uh, happy to stick around a little bit longer. Any other questions? Wow, thanks for the stat there, Brooklyn. Okay, folks, I got five minutes after the hour. Uh, sounds like the questions are over. We're gonna uh, disconnect at this particular point in time. We'd love to hear from you though. If you have additional questions, uh, you can call us at Acumen Learning. You can find us online uh, at Acumen Learning. All right, take care. Thanks for joining us today.